What's up guys, it is Dom, and in this video I wanted to show you guys a more in-depth look at the website builder. I totally understand that building websites and funnels inside of this system can be so easy, but also when you don't know how to use any of the actual functions, it's probably pretty difficult at first. So we're gonna break down some of my favorite tips and tricks on how to do this. And of course, you know how it is, if you stay till the end, I'm gonna give you an unbelievable offer to join our private Facebook group and two free courses. One of those courses being completely white labeled so you can slap your logos on it and give it out to your clients. And yes, I realize that is insane, but here we are. So let's start with the websites tab. So I'm gonna click on new website here. We're gonna to go to the template library. For this one, we're gonna probably do chiropractor. Let's do chiropractor. They've got a really nice page here. Um, but obviously there's some things that need fixed. So let's scroll to the bottom here and we're gonna agree and then get the template. Cool, and it's called Physio. You can see our four different pages here. I'm not the biggest fan of having multiple pages. What I would usually do about this is I'd probably make the About Us page inside of the homepage with the services and the Contact Us as just a regular form that's a pop-up on the website. I would much rather the customer and the client have a very easy one-page website. So that's what I'm gonna start off by saying, but let's edit this real quick. So right out the gate, it looks pretty good, nothing too bad. I don't, I'm not a huge fan of like really boxy buttons. I like kind of having the curved buttons. So we'll get to that in a second, but if I scroll down here, you know, nothing too bad. This is a great website. That's so the one thing I really wanna point out that I think a lot of you guys, especially starting out, are going to like kind of ignore, and please don't, is these websites were already designed. The fonts were handpicked. The photos are great. The sections, the padding, the margins, all of these were already done for you by professionals. So I'm telling you right now, the least amount that you change on one of these websites, the better they're going to look. I think a lot of people, especially when starting out with Go High Level, they try so hard to like make the website themselves and add their own touch. And I'm just like, no, I maybe spend two hours on a client website, depending on how much I have to copyright and put in there. But like, let's say for the meet the team section, if they only have three members, all I'm gonna do is go over to the largest section, which is gonna be this purple section. And I'm just gonna delete it and watch what happens. See? It expands. So it's already done for you, just don't overthink it. So that's my first set of advice. But let's scroll down here, let's make sure everything looks good. We've got client testimonials, we're gonna get into that as well. You know, accepted insurance, so these different companies that they want you to put in there. We've got the phone number, we've got a lot of different things to cover in this. So let's scroll to the top, and before we change anything, let's see what it looks like on the phone view. I think a lot of people forget to check the phone view, which is where most clients and customers are going to be looking at a website. Like yes, it looks great on desktop, but 99 9% of people are not gonna be carrying their laptop around when looking for chiropractors. So let's head over to the phone view and check that out. So many things wrong right out the gate. So let's find out how we can fix these. So I actually have a little hack for this for mobile and desktop to make them both look really good without kind of affecting the other side. And it's honestly so ingenious. I don't know why it took me months and months to figure this out. So we'll start with the main photo section. I'm gonna click on the green. And I'd also like to point out that this opening hours is not inside of this green. The reason the green is pushed so high up is because if you go over here, you can see it's at 180, which it should only be able to go to 100. And you can see here on margin top, it's at minus 86. So even though these can only go to 100, so if you check right here, this can only go to 100. It can't go past 100. You have to physically type it in. It's kind of this little hack here where you can make it go past 100 or you can make it go below zero. And you'll understand why we do this in a second. I don't wanna mess up anything right now, so I'm not gonna change it because I wanna show you the actual mobile hack. So what we'll do is we'll take this section, we'll head over to the advanced section and you can see on visibility, we can turn this off for phone or off for desktop. So why is this important? Because now we can duplicate the entire section. So let's click on the green. Let's head up to the duplicate button. And since I'm having trouble clicking on it, this will happen sometimes when you mess with the margins, you won't be able to duplicate it or be able to click on it. So let me actually show you how to fix that too because now we have to go back margins so on margin top since it's minus 86 that's why it's overlapping there you go see now it's a 26 and it's back up to where it's supposed to be so now we can duplicate we can take this one go back to like minus 70 let's try that and now we can actually get rid of this first section on mobile so let's go to advanced let's click off of mobile and it's gone but what happened to the desktop version Let's go check it out. So we've got two, we don't want two on here. So now we're gonna click on the one on the bottom and we're gonna go to advanced and we're gonna click it off for desktop. And there you go. Now I can change literally anything that I want. Go back to the phone view 
and check it out. Hasn't changed at all, which means I can now fix the photo here, fix the padding, change the buttons, whatever I need to, and it will not affect the desktop version. So if you're having issues with certain sections, you're trying to change the desktop and make it look good on mobile, just do the duplicate hack. It's so easy, but I do have to point out one thing that you need to fix anytime you do this duplicate hack is that the buttons are now different. So this button is not the same as this button. So if you change this button to the pop-up and you scroll all the way down here, let me move myself and you link it to the pop-up. Now, if we head back over to phone view, you would think that this button would be on pop-up. Nope, we didn't change it. It's a different button. So we're gonna go over to pop-up again and save it. So that's the only thing you have to remember. If you have buttons or certain functions, you have to go duplicate those as well, or just do them manually like what I just did. But let's scroll up. Obviously we do not want all of this. I think this is too much. I don't think it's necessary for phone view. It looks great on desktop though. So I, I wanna keep it there. But I'm gonna click on this entire section, head over to advanced. I'm not gonna duplicate anything. I'm just gonna get rid of it for the phone. There you go. And then now we have that padding issue. So let's get rid of that and boom. If you think this is too big, we have multiple sections here so we can get rid of some of these and make it a little bit smaller. Like I like, I love this size right here, but I obviously don't love the photo. The photo doesn't fit. So let's get rid of this photo and choose one of these photos maybe that make more sense. We're gonna scroll down here to image. All the images are done in URLs, which I actually think make it easier. So now we're gonna scroll back up, click on the background of this image and we're gonna paste in our new image. And there you go. Looks a little bit better, but if you wanna adjust it even more, you're gonna to go to image options and you can see all the different options here. We've got full center, which is the one we had, which was good. We've got 100% width, which is definitely gonna just make it too small. And then you'd have to adjust the margins on the bottom. We got fit 100% width and height. This might actually transform the image. There you go. Yeah, I knew that was gonna happen. We've got no repeat, pushed it over to the side. So you can see all these different options. I think full center almost always is the best option. You know, obviously when you have an image like this, you want it full centered, but obviously you can take these images into Canva and adjust them, adjust their size, adjust what they're doing. But I, I kind of like this one, you know, it's not too bad. I'd say the only problem is kind of seeing the, the words. I'd say the font's kind of hard to locate in this. So there's some cool things you can do to kind of help the background image. So let's click on the blue background image here. So it's gonna be this blue section that has all the words in it and the button. Let's head over to the background color and you can see there's some see-through options here that are more like transparent, but also give you kind of a darker background at the same time. Because if you did like something like solid, like blue, it would cut off the photo, see? So you wanna do something that's see-through, but you can actually see the words and everything else. And obviously I'm not a huge fan of this right here, but it's something like that. Maybe if we cut off the top here and we push this out to a different section and we made a new blue section. And after playing around with this, I don't think the blue is gonna work. I just don't think it is. And that's what's so great about making all these is that you kind of just get a feel for it and you're like, oh, this actually just doesn't need to be in here. Let's just get rid of the words. We're gonna keep the blue section so that this stays below this guy's chin right here. But you can see how much better that is now that we can see it, we can view it, and we can read it. And yes, there's certain things that we could change to maybe make this look a little bit more professional here and there, but these are tricks that you just pick up over time. And obviously this is just a stock image. We probably would have found a better image. We probably would have used the client's image. So there's so many different things I could change here. I'm just trying to keep this in a good time frame so you understand kind of how to edit it. The next thing I wanna break down is the button itself. I don't like this square type of button. I like it more rounded. So we're gonna click on the button. We're gonna head over to the advanced section. We're gonna head all the way down here to borders. We're gonna click on full border. Then they're gonna give us all these options down here. And they're also gonna make this little border and it's gonna be like this little green color for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make this a see-through color so it doesn't show anything. And then here it is for the border radius. I kinda of like 15 or 20. Let's try 15 real quick. And there you go kind of a really nice rounded edge, but let me try something even lower than that. Let's do 10 and there you go. But I'm not a huge fan of the size of the button now, so let me change it real quick. So you're gonna head over here to the mobile font size and just increase it a little bit and there you go. Oh, that's too big, make it a little smaller, sweet. That's not bad right there, I like that. Not only that, you can make the button move. So if you go back to advanced section, we can go to button effects and you can uh, you can see all the different effects. We've got the glow loop, we got the rocking, bounce, elevate, wobble. Let's try the bounce. There you go. Now you have a moving button, looks pretty cool. You can go down there and easily duplicate this and just copy and paste it and change it for all of these. Especially if you've already built the function inside of it, like it goes to the pop-up. You don't wanna have to do that for every single one of these. So just copy and paste it. Work smarter, not harder, guys. So when we get here to the bottom, there's some confusing sections here about like phone numbers, and you might not know how to put those in. You might not know how to put in emails. So basically what you'll end up doing is you'll click on the section with the phone number. You'll highlight the number. You'll go over to this attachment icon, and you type in T-E-L colon, and then you literally just type in the number. 
And then if the format's correct, you'll be able to click on that number and it will automatically pull up the phone number so that you can call them. But my favorite thing to do is actually use the button icons because they have these functions kind of built in already. It's just easier. So if you scroll to the bottom again, you'll see link to website, but there's also call SMS, email address. So these are so much easier. Obviously, if you were gonna do a text message, you would put an SMS and then you would just write the number. And then as soon as they click on that button, boom, takes them straight to the text message. That's obviously the easier way to do that. But if you're looking to just connect that to a phone number, you just saw exactly how to do it, highlight it and use the attachment icon. So now if we scroll all the way back up to the top here, I wanna show you the navigation menu because I think people mess this up a lot and it's actually pretty simple. So if you click on this little navigation icon, you'll see that Yes, we've got the home, about us, services, contact us, all comes up perfect, but how do we change all of this stuff? So if we scroll down here, you can see it's all right here. So if we click on the icon to the far right of home, it tells you exactly what you can do. You can go to that page, you can change which page it goes to, you can change the name of it and then submit it. So that's how you change all of those. You can change the mobile fonts here, make them bigger, smaller, whatever you need. Same for desktop. You can change that little icon if it's three bars or if it has, you know, all these different icons, you can change it to whatever you want. I like the three bars. I think it looks pretty good. You can change all the color schemes. Like I'm not a huge fan of this kind of like silver gray here. So I'm going to change it to white. Look at how that popped way better. And not only that, we have a complete white background. So if we change this to like maybe the see-through background, check that out. How cool is that? I think I like that a lot better. Or maybe this, maybe even darker background. I think I like this one the best. And then under the advanced section, you can change the drop down item spacing and even the hover color. So when you hover over it, what color is it going to be when it's live, of course. So all of that is customizable. looks great. Very easy to do. And then lastly, I'm going to break down kind of the sections. So if we start a new section here, let's do a full width. Add a row. We're going to do one column. Add another element. Here we go. So obviously header and subheadline, you guys know those. Paragraph is gonna be more so something like this, where you can put in a nice little paragraph. And then of course we have bullet lists as well. So those are all pretty self-explanatory. We don't need to run by those. And then we of course have buttons and forms. So if you built forms in the back end, you can click on forms and pick the one that you'd like. You can add as many buttons as you like here. And then for media, we have videos and images. Obviously you guys are gonna be using these all the time. And for videos, I must tell you, you can't just upload a random file of video. It doesn't work like that. You have to either connect it to Vimeo or YouTube. YouTube, which isn't that big of a deal. I use Vimeo for pretty much everything. So connecting it to a Vimeo is a pretty good choice. And then of course we have custom code. If you guys are into that, we have surveys, calendars, maps. I do want to break down maps real quick because I did have a question about that in the Facebook group. So if you click on maps here, you can actually go to the open search box, pick on the location that you'd like, and even change the map type to terrain or satellite or even hybrid. But for this one, let's do terrain. I think that flows the best. You can even adjust the zoom here. Let's keep it at about right here. I think that's a good spot. And then of course, I've gone over padding before, but you can see here that this padding might not be very great here. So I would click on this green. We've got a huge padding on the top. This is most likely because it looks really good on desktops. So if you have to go back and duplicate it and do that hack we did in the beginning, do that. But for right now, obviously, I'm just going to change it, make the padding on the bottom a little smaller. And there you go. And you can mess around with this however you'd like, but I just want to show you kind of the different tips and tricks. So let's add a new one here. We've got SVG, which I don't use very often. And then we've got reviews, which are really cool. So if you have a Google My Business or if your client has a Google My Business, you want to add those reviews in in real time, you can easily do that, which is so awesome because how the system works is if someone does happen to leave a bad review, they will actually take that out and it will not show on the website. It shows only four stars and above. So a very cool system right there. And then we have a countdown timer for if you have a sale of some sort, we've got a minute timer timer, a day timer, the navigation menu we just edited, little dividers that make things like kind of pop and look cool. So if we added a divider underneath the header here, you can see that, but that divider is not really good. So we want to edit that real quick. So under width, we're going to do probably 25 or 30%. Let's try 30. And then on the center alignment, we're probably going to do the left. See, we want it all to be under left and it's a little skinny. Let's, uh, let's fatten it up. So under height, let's do two. And there you go. See how that made it look a little bit better. So that is the divider section. Let me add another one here. So we've got divider, we got the progress bar, which is kind of a cool little feature and then image features as well. And then if you have any type of invoices, of course, you know, you can do the two step or the new one step order form. Obviously one step is faster. It's easier. It's better. So you can do the one step order form and then an order confirmation as well. So you've got pretty much everything in there. I mean, it doesn't get simpler than that, but I do understand it takes time. It takes time to understand the entire system. But if you guys give it a week or two weeks and play around with this, there is no reason you guys cannot be professionals 
at making really easy and simple websites and funnels. But before I leave, I do want to show you one cool trick that I found that I didn't even know was like kind of possible was adding GIFs or GIFs, whatever it's called. So check this out. I added this little GIF right here. I actually created it through Canva and then added it as an image, just a regular image, just like you would add anything else. Didn't add it as a video. You can see right here, it's under image settings. And I will warn you, they have to be a certain length. I think this one was like 3.5 seconds. Anything above that, at least using Canva, it wasn't working for me. Like they just would not allow, they would say the size was too big, it's not gonna let me do it. So I had to mess around with this a lot, find the perfect length of time and then add it in there. But isn't that cool? That looks so professional. You can actually change this too and go to the SEO metadata, go to the bottom and you can actually have the website when you send it to people over text, move just like this. So they'll have like a moving website website link, which looks so cool. Your clients are going to absolutely love that. And you can create a quick video and go on Canva and then take that video and turn it into this. So that's just something I thought was really cool. I love that feature. And there's so much more I could cover inside of the websites tab, but we would be here for hours and I'll make more videos on different types of functions, way more specific types of videos. But for now, I wanted you guys to know that it's really easy to do this. Do not get frustrated. The templates are there for a reason. Just because there's not a power washing template doesn't mean you have to create one from scratch. You can easily go to any other templates, add in the power washing photos and be totally fine. And like I said before, don't mess everything up because you think it's gonna look better your way. These are already designed, they already look great. I mean, I didn't mess with any of this stuff. I just changed the buttons and the words. This was a great template. Why would I mess it up? Why would I change something that already looks good? So that's it for this video. But before I leave, of course, we're using Go High Level for all of this. So if you wanna learn how to do this, if you wanna run your own software agency, build websites for people, charge at 97 a month, 297, 497, whatever you want per month, and start building that monthly recurring revenue with unbelievable profit margins, guys, then check my link in the description below where you're going to see a 30-day free trial. Not only that, but you're gonna get access to my Go High Level Facebook group and my exclusive affiliates only group if you guys use my link. Like I said, 30 days free, that's an extended free trial. Go High Level only offers two weeks, so I can get you four weeks for free. Not to mention my entire setup course that can get you set up and running in like two days. And the complete white labeled onboarding course where you can just take the course, send it to your clients, and they can teach themselves how to onboard. It's crazy, guys. I put so much time and effort into this. Please check it out. Also, like and subscribe. I'm trying to grow my channel. Growing YouTube channels is very, very difficult. So any like, any subscribe, any comment, it helps me out a ton. We're already growing so much. I think we're like over 800 subscribers. That's crazy. I cannot wait to hit a thousand. It's going to be a huge deal for me. And I couldn't have done it without all of you guys. So thank you so much. And I hope this video helped. I'll see you guys in the next video.